So the drill is hold it as loose as you can, as loose as you possibly can. Uh, the mallet will be jogging around in your uh, hand. But eventually you want to reach a point where uh, your fingers kind of understand what the mallet is going to do. Tighten the grip a little bit, but eventually you're going to find that rhythm of just... The topic of this week's video comes from Reddit, from r slash marimba, from user yeehaw partner. Um, I'm also pretty sure I'm going to post this video on the subreddit after I make it, so if you're watching this, hello. This is kind of awkward. I'm using your post in my video because I think it'd be instructive. I think some people could learn from it. The post is middle finger bruising with Stevens. I'm just beginning with my four mallet grip and I'm pretty certain that my two and three grip are pretty good. That's the inside mallets. But my one and four mallets, I have no clue what's happening. That's the outer mallets. Whenever I play a stroke with them, the base of the mallet hits against my middle finger and it hurts a bit. So I don't have a video of them playing, so I can't be sure exactly what's happening. But if I had to guess, I think uh, this is my guess of what's happening. Oops. And if you are on the desktop on YouTube, you can use the comma and period keys to watch a video frame by frame. But I'll explain this in slow motion anyway. I think what's happening is, let's just do the outer mallet. When you're playing a stroke, you want your wrist to rotate the entire way so that the mallet reaches the bottom, right? I think what's happening is that this user uh, isn't going all the way with the wrist. The mallet is going all the way just from like the momentum of the mallet. Does that make sense? And so the wrist kind of stops a little before where it should. And it creates this gap between the uh, middle and the ring finger. You can also notice that the ring and pinky fingers act like a spring right? If you push uh, down on the mallet with those, it's like a spring. And so once the mallet rebounds after hitting the stroke, it hits the middle finger. So explain it slowly like this, you can uh, very obviously see what happens. Uh, this is actually like the exact phenomenon of how a piano mechanism works, believe it or not. This is exactly how a piano mechanism works. If you press a key all the way down on a piano, all the way down is only going, pretend this is the hammer of the piano and this is the string. All the way down on the key, the mechanism will only bring the hammer to like there. What brings the hammer actually hitting the string is that is the momentum from the hammer, the momentum it already had. Completely. Okay, if I hit it hard, then, then the strings, then the hammer is gonna go all the way and hit the string. But you'll notice if you've ever pressed a piano key slowly, you don't hear a peep because uh, it's not designed to bring the hammer to the string. Okay, but if I do it really slowly, the hammer actually comes very close to the string, but then releases as it gets closer. If it did, then you'd have problems with uh, the hammer damping the string when it's not supposed to. And you can just uh, see the mechanism at work on YouTube and you can see what I mean. But yeah, we want to do the opposite of this. We want We don't want the mallet getting there from momentum and then springing back like a piano hammer, we want uh, the mallet going all the way. And when I, I here's what helped me figure this out, is uh, I kind of, my brain kind of predicted the timing of when the mallet hits the bar. And at that point, the brain tells my wrist to pull up. So I think that's how you mainly fix it. Think of the moment in time where your uh, mallet is going to hit the bar and make that the moment that you stroke upwards. And also make sure to stroke all the way downwards too. A lot of people try to fix this by gripping the mallet harder, making the, str the spring stronger. Do not do that. Do not death grip the mallet because that's bad for your wrist. You actually should be able to play with a really loose grip if you are in perfect sync with the mallet. And this is the drill that I want to show to you guys. So the drill is hold it as loose as you can, as loose as you possibly can, and try and make some uh, strokes. So at first it'll look like this. You're kind of going to miss. Uh, the mallet will be jogging around in your uh, hand. But eventually you want to reach a point where 
uh, your fingers kind of understand what the mallet is going to do and you're really closely looking at the mallet, feeling the mallet and following its lead. Your hand is kind of following the mallet's lead. Just kind of feel what the mallet needs and give it that. And once you figure that out, tighten the grip a little bit and then you, you might uh, uh, go back to square one and it might be dragging around a little bit, but eventually you're going to find that rhythm of just the uh, knowing exactly where your hand needs to be, how tight you need to hold it. And then eventually keep tightening up and at the end, it should not be a hard grip. It should, it should be a firm grip. Yeah, it should be a firm grip and the mallet and your fingers should move as one, but don't depth grip it. It should just be nice and relaxed. You should be able to wiggle it around if you want to, but you don't because you are in control. And another neat thing is that your middle finger will actually eventually uh, form calluses. I don't know how well you can see that there, but my callus is here, my knuckle is here, and it's eventually going to form the calluses such that your mallet just sits in between the callus and the knuckle. I think that's hilarious that in marimba your body has to form to the instrument like some sort of shapeshifter alien. Another thing that could be uh, contributing to the like spring phenomenon is wrist reaction, which I talked about in an earlier video. Beginners, uh, including myself, tend to pivot at the wrist kind of like that, and that makes you much more prone to spring. The pivot really should be somewhere inside of the hand. A lot of people don't know that starting out, but that's where the pivot should be. And you can see it's obviously still possible to um, uh, to spring with the pivot there. But I talked about it in my other video. Since the pivot is closer to the mallet, it's just a lot less force. And so long story short, it's just much easier to uh, stroke it with this pivot rather than this pivot. It's a lot less work with this pivot. And yeah, don't forget your rotations. I've been like doing this a lot um, for the, that would be a double stop. But also for your single strokes, make sure you're rotating your wrist. That's kind of besides the point. I'm just rambling now, but hope that helps.